think we are an uh, Atlassian Platinum partner since uh, this year or since um, uh, late uh, last year. And um, we are based in Berlin. So Matthias is now in uh, quarantine in Berlin. I'm in Stuttgart and we have another location in Köln and two locations in Poland. And uh, our, so we proposed, um, I think you saw it already in the uh, community forum, this uh, topic for the today's breakfast. Maybe I can uh, share the link again in the chat. I actually want to say all panelists and attendees. Okay. And so our topic is uh, very quite large and far reaching, but the basic idea is, um, you know, some customers uh, who maybe don't have initially experience with Jira uh, sometimes think, okay, Jira is, is uh, this sort of system that you can configure. It's very flexible. You can apply many configurations. And then uh, because of its complexity, you want, of course, to test those configurations initially in a staging environment, in a development environment, um, and then apply those one-to-one uh, -to, -one to production once they are fully tested and accepted. And so this is sort of the naive view of how the configuration, configuration in JIRA works. Um, and so the, ideally they would like to have like a test instance, you apply configurations and then in a sort of configuration file, like a sort of configuration as code uh, type of uh, mechanism, you just copy paste to production and that's it. And it would seem to be easy enough, but of course how we, uh, as we all know, as uh, all of you guys know, it's not that easy. Um, and so our mission or Matthias's mission was to find a way to get as close as possible to that uh, ideal scenario. So that to find a tool and uh, we mentioned, um, first of all, this uh, project configurator for Jira add-on, which would allow you to on a project level basis, but also on a global Jira configuration basis. So uh, workflows, schemes and other global entities uh, to uh, configure them on a test environment and then uh, just export th these configurations and import them into production with, of course, uh, minimizing the risk of error. And, um, and, uh, and as an advantage, of course, this saves you the, the time that it takes to, to apply the configurations again on production. So this was um, the basic idea. And um, of course, this, uh, <laughs> the idea sounds good, but then, uh, Matthias has already had uh, extensive experience with this tool and um, our <laughs> impression was that it's just not that easy and we don't know if this is even possible. So this is why we wanted to um, pose the question to you guys and see if anyone of you has experience with it, has any recommendations or or if you say, oh no, this forget about it, uh, just uh, do it the, the old style way manually or what your impressions of this topic are. So Matthias, do you want to add anything as a first introduction? No, it's fine. Um, but one mention again, um, we tested two tools, uh, Project Configurator and Configuration Manager. And uh, we decided that um, the Adaptivist tool, um, Project Configurator, better fit our need and because uh, the, um, transferring based on IDs or on names. And um, we are always fighting with um, when there is a difference between the um, production and the uh, staging, uh, for example, um, the IDs uh, maybe of a status uh, are not always um, identical and that leads to some problems. And that's why we um, decided to test only with a project configurator. Uh, we think it's better for our um, 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 use case, what we have. So and maybe I, I can and, start. And, and, and I wonder, and I wonder, is there really a chance to do this, what uh, Katerina described? Okay. okay, maybe I will start from eBay perspective because we had that issue. 
and we spent a lot of the effort on investigation the staff. So that time, it was in 2017, we made a decision to move forward with the Botron configuration manager. And after one year of implementing that, we dropped that. And I want to tell you why we dropped that. Because we found out that we have too many projects in parallel, which means that changes in production in the range of one, two, three months were too, uh, too many changes in production. So you couldn't upload the stuff to from like a test environment to the production because they were like collision. It's like yeah. merging hell. Yeah. And we decided that we spent too much time and also we broke some other like our scripts and so on because of the Botron uh, deployment because then we changed the names or something with IDs and there were the another like there was already the a custom field created in the meantime because you need to know that we have like 100 tickets it's per month, like small status name custom features that it's weak. And you don't do the reverse also in the lower environments each time because it would take too much time to do that every time. And also there's a collision when you create new custom field already in production and it's not in the test and then you create new one, the test and the ID is the same and then you have a problem. And we faced that a lot of the issues due to that and we decided to to go back to the old method of doing that manually twice. So in that, because we, also important that we have a lot of the running project in parallel. So we have instance for each project, longer project than one month. So we have like, let's say five instances of the test Jira. So for each project, and then imagine that deploying each of them with different custom IDs and so on was really madness for us. So we decided to, to, to drop that and don't pay that 10 K or 15 K per year for something that we can't really use uh, but if you are having like small in spending also time to implement each minor change also in the lower environment or maybe use botron to 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 to, to move it to the lower environments that it should work theoretically but our project we tried that we restored really often the lower environments and so on but at the end it was too much time consuming that we did that okay let's spend one week for deploying three months project or four months project for just deploying to production that's it that's my opinion on the topic and my experience okay thank you thank you very interesting mm -hmm. Um, and we have another um, aspect. If we, if you have, um, if your challenge are not uh, a lot of um, um, custom fields or um, uh, many plugins, but a very complicated um, um, workflow, maybe a vanilla Jira with a very large workflow. Maybe that could uh, be okay uh, with the tool. Uh, As I said, it depends how many changes you do in the meantime when you bit book, because let's say you restore production to the test and the most crucial thing, how many changes you will do in the production and you will not do them in the lower environment when you are doing the project, because that's the crucial part here. So how many changes you did in pro production between that restore and deployment to production from the bottom mm -hmm. or from the project management? That's the time zone. And in our case it was three months and there were too many changes in production. But if you will not make a changes in production that it will work perfectly. Um, the question is, um, so did uh, Hubert, what you're saying is um, you cannot change production. You basically always change the lower systems and then deploy forward. That's then it will work perfectly. If, it's, if it, that's your use case, then it will work either project configurator or Botron, the, the, the second one, then it will work. But if you will have a, like, like, let's be like, like Christian said in BMW, you have probably tons of requests every day because you have like 60,000 users or something, then it's tough to, for them to wait until you will deploy from the lower to the production, the changes, yeah. They want to have it instant, at least in eBay. So if they request, they want to have that in the week or something. They said that I will not wait three weeks or three months for the new custom field or something. But we can't confirm this. If we have a clone in production, a clone of a, 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 um, staging, the transfer of the configuration is not um, error free. There are some mistakes always. 
-hmm. with, with, with both tools, always, and, and some small mistakes. You have to search for it, maybe in a post function using uh, Jira MISC workflow extension. There's only one, um, uh, one post function not correct because it's based on IDs, not on names, for instance. Mm -hmm. And we always found some small errors, always. And even if you use um, clone, clone of a, uh, um, um, clone of a, a staging, that means it's um, 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 perfect equal, yes, in every ID, in, uh, in a database, in, in, in every aspect. The transfer is not uh, without any errors. Maybe some small errors, but we find always errors. Even and in the in the plugins that are uh, officially supported by the tool, yes, maybe uh, adapter with tools. I yeah. use Botron, so I don't have much experience with the Botron because ah, yeah, yeah, three years okay, ago, okay. and the bot and that time project <laughs> configuration from the adapter was like really basic one. And mm -hmm. what I would say, it's always nice to just make a request or back request to that. To, to the plugin developer and then they can fix that because I think it will be worth it not only for you but, but for other companies. That's my also approach. When I found like issues like that, I would always report that because then they will fix it one day. They are not at last and that they will wait 10 years to fix them. Mm. And Hubert, did you have particular difficulties or were the errors, uh, let's say, um, related to particular add-ons or did this happen regardless? So, so even with vanilla Jira configurations, it was still a problem. As I said, for me, Botron works really well. Like I didn't have that many issues with that like post function or something. But mm -hmm. maybe it's that uh, specific like edge case or, some, or something. I, I, you, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's because of the adapter. Mm -hmm. So it was the problem was more about the time. So, because any way to test the configurations in the development instance and deployment on or deploy, deploy them on prod, it just took too long, and so you had this situation where prod and uh, dev diverged sort of that couldn't be avoided. Exactly, that was mm -hmm. our case. Mm -hmm. That the project were, took too long. It was like three to even more months, like when we implemented GDPR in Jira. So that was a six months or nine months project. And we tried to deploy that and we felt like cruelty and we said, okay, we will move it everything manually. And it's, but at the end of the day, we said that it will stress too much our main instance, so we, we have a special Jira just for GDPR. <laughs> so we created a totally mm -hmm. new instance for just GDPR project. And we use Botron, by the way, for that, because then it worked well. Because we just, no, we do, didn't use the Botron even. We just deployed that staging as a prod and clean it up. Something like that. Or maybe Botron. I don't remember. Yeah, I think Botron. Yeah. I. I my personal uh, experience with Botron was really good. Like, let's say eight out of 10 points. Of course, I found some issues that was not like issue free, that's for sure. But for most of our plugins and so on, it worked well, except of that, what I said, that the instance was totally different that you couldn't deploy it because there were too many changes and they break other like script runner scripts or so on. So we had that issue. So right now we are doing manually, twice, always on that staging or test environment and then on production. Mm -hmm. I, I know that it's pain in the ass, but I think I get used to it because I'm doing that for the last 10 years, the same stuff. So I, want to I try to automate and it's really pain in the ass. Like. But if you, as you said, if you have a vanilla and also only like one, two project, you should try with Botron maybe and see how it works because you can try for three months for free and you will see if you will have the same issues as an Adaptavis. And also I would also create a ticket to Adaptavis. I listen, I have that case, why I have it like that. Maybe they will answer. I would do like that. And to add something from my side, normally there is no vanilla Jira uh, out in the wild. Normally you have script runner, you have MISC workflows and so on. 
and if it comes to using uh, asset management like inside and 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 then deploying from stage to production is not possible you have to do it manually so doesn't matter whether these are 2000 users or 85000 users yeah it's it's pain yeah and uh, um, you have <laughs> calculated in your quotes always doing it three to four times and not only one time. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, there's uh, no one here would uh, say I have a perfect solution. The perfect solution is to do it manually and be carefully. Yes. And exactly. write your own script. Yeah. <laughs> If you will find the solution, you will become rich. Yes, so, okay. I was afraid. I was afraid. <laughs> and I was sure that there is no uh, other answer. Yes, because we have tested and tried and uh, done everything. And what I don't know is I'm not um, a plugin developer. Yes. Uh, if there is um, a, um, a tooling based on, 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 on the Jira machine outside of, um, um, on a deeper level, if there is a possibility to do this, yes? When you are going deep inside in, in Java, like a plugin manager, a plugin developer. I, I don't know. I guess the answer is um, like the, just a variety of versions of Jira, the, the, like the, 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 the many inceptions of the database scheme that, that uh, yeah. underlying um, plus, um, like the, the, the variance in add-ons that add post functions, configurations, and everything is it's just too complex. And as you said, like even even with um, like preferably supported um, add-ons and these kind of things, um, it, it still doesn't work out even with a very vanilla configuration. And uh -huh. you see this, that 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 even uh, like even tiny things such as uh, such as workflows exporting importing or something um, like native Jira workflow import export might go wrong um, uh, between supposedly supported versions. Um, so I guess like the the, the whole Elastin stack just became too complex over the years um, that you will find um, a one one size fits all solutions. So there's definitely, as Christian said, there's definitely custom scripts that we have as well um, for, for certain aspects uh, of, of transferring configuration from, from one instance to another, um, but with a very narrow scope. So for example, um, we, we, can, um, uh, like we can dump and restore group and, and, and role permissions across all sorts of projects. Um, we can apply um, uh, permission schemes. We can apply certain other configuration items such as issue screens, security levels, and all these kind of things. Um, but this is always like a custom solution for a very, very specific use case um, and not a dump your configuration from that, that instance and then restore, uh, restore the same thing on that instance kind of thing. Okay, okay. Um, the question uh, um, originally came from a DevOps guy and uh, they didn't understand, understand. That's not um, like um, when you are developing code, you can always merge and uh, have a DevOps uh, solution. And uh, they wonder if it is possible uh, to do like a DevOps engineer and not doing anything manually. And we said, we are afraid. Uh, we think you have to do manually steps and there is no other solution. And okay, you always agree. And um, yes, but uh, do you know any other tools? We, are, we, have, um, we spoke about uh, Project Configurator and uh, Configuration Manager, and I think um, there are no other tools, yes, to, do, uh, to evaluate. As, as far as I know, these are the only tools um, that have a scope as, as wide as Configuration Manager and Project Configurator. So there's, yeah. there's definitely other tools for certain other aspects, but um, if, if you want to have kind of a generic add-on, these are the only ones in the marketplace that are also very well developed. Yeah, um, okay, so there's, okay. Uh, there's other things, like if, if you're talking about, um, let, let's say, a DevOps approach, as, as in um, you do not want to, to apply any manual changes, but only programmatic changes, um, then there's something like the, the BOPS with CLI, for example, um, command line interface, or that there's a very, um, a very uh, uh, like versatile uh, Jira client um, for the command line written in Golang on, on GitHub uh, that can also do all sorts of things um, uh, on, on a programmatic level. 
But apart from that, like if, if you're looking at some sort of um, uh, full-fledged solution, uh, project configurator and, and uh, configuration manager, the only ones that I'm aware of. Can you please put it in the in the, in the chat? I didn't understand the tool. Sure. Of Swift, yeah. I know, and the other, I didn't un understand. I put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. No. So what, what you can also do for the changes that you want to make it programmatically, not like manually. So what you can do, and I'm sometimes using, so it depends if you are uh, using the seal or the script runner, doesn't matter. You can create your REST API and you can call that API to doing the changes in like configuration of the Jira, not only with that, like you can create custom fields, you can create workflows and so on and so on. So you can all make nearly all that stuff that the Jira admin can do and you can expose it as your custom API and then you can call that API to do the changes if you want to do that in the fancy way, DevOps or so on. But of course, it's a custom development that you need to create a proper scripts where, which will be triggered with the data from API call, curl call, and that's it. But that's a complex solution overall. Yeah. So we, did, yes, and we I've use tried that it. for the simple stuff, yeah? And I've tried it uh, too, but uh, there are some breakings because the REST API is not complete. You are always missing a very uh, important um, REST API call. No, but but Matthias, you could uh, you could theoretically see what you mean. Create your own custom. No, no, the case is that you can with script runner, and then you can do whatever you want. Exactly. So that. that's that's the case. So you create your own API, and in yeah. script runner, you can trigger whatever function from script runner, and you can trigger with that your custom API. So we are Ten using Seal in yeah. eBay, not script runner, but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly basically building it from the ground up. You ha you would have to create your own uh, data model, data structure. How do you uh, pass it on? Uh, sort of uh, export it. But you have it. to work on the Jira REST API, and there are some missing points, always. No, the idea is what what Hubert mentioned. Um, the script runner allows you to define your own REST endpoints. So, for example, yeah. with script runner, you can add your own REST API, and that is what we are doing, for example, quite extensively for something like setting an announcement banner. But um, you can't overcome the limitation from uh, from Jira. Maybe there's a limitation. No, no, but what you can creation. Do no, no, you can't uh, uh, overcome these limitations. Never, never. No, no, you can do anything. You can do with no, the no, no. With the you can't do anything. It's not possible. With the Java API, I mean, so you can overcome the limitations of the REST API, but anything you can do in Groovy with the custom exactly. scripts, no. create projects. That's exactly the what? idea. So <laughs> we, we, for example, have um, have REST uh, uh, like custom REST endpoints um, that uh, issue database queries, for example, for things that, that are not supported by the Java, Java uh, API. Okay, we just okay, okay. If, if you're going to the database, you have some more possibilities, but you are. That's not. <laughs> that's is a, uh, the effort is maybe uh, hundreds of if you always do it manually. Yes. I didn't think about uh, manipulating the database. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's changing in every version. In every version, it's changing. Yes, it has yes. to be a it's yeah. even the Java. And the bandana, bandana, uh, the bandana table is uh, uh, trash for everything. If you don't have any idea how to make it uh, uh, correctly, there's no change working with the database. Okay. Maybe if you only have one very special um, um, need, yes, but not for a, a typical production system. Okay. Okay. Yeah, especially for the, this solution, I would get. I would guess it's trickier to interact than with the add-ons, right? If you don't, if they don't have an open uh, Java API, then it's always a bit of a pain, or it's not supported. It's not official. Um, but but Katerin, for as as you said for. for uh, restricted scopes for particular, maybe just particular um, configurations of some JIRA entities, permission schemes and so on, this could be done. I don't know if it saves time in the long run, depends on the use case. But sure. Katarina, Katarina uh, it was not <clears throat> clear the answer. Um, uh, let, let us uh, question again. Uh, you showed me a workflow from your customer and the workflow looks like uh, coronavirus. A mess. It, it, it. <laughs> and my question is, <laughs> if you only have, uh, maybe no plugins, only have a workflow uh, just like this, it is possible to trans transfer it 
with the XML file uh, without any um, errors. Did you ever try this? So with the project configurator XML, you mean, or the, the work? Maybe it's XML. Right? You can export an XML file. And Just import. of the workflow. Just of the workflow. Only a very, a Corona workflow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they would not be happy about this. They um, had hundreds of states maybe, or a million, I don't know exactly. <laughs> and transitions. The state is the last of the problem. The transition is the problem. I'm okay, sorry. okay. Um, so no, I haven't tried personally, but so in that case, if it's only about the workflow, I would, my first intuition would be to export just the workflow with the native Jira um, workflow XML export. So Did you ever find a, now, a limitation what, in, in this? It, it never worked for me to be honest. So XML import export never worked for me well. So I always failed. So I never do that. Uh -huh. Because there was especially maybe without add-ons, it will work, but I always mm. have an add-on. So and yeah, if you are importing true. with add-ons, it's broken always. At least that's my experience about that mm -hmm. topic. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, I doubt that you can see a workflow of that complexity without even JSU or something. One add add-on doesn't have to be script runner, but yeah, the, those things kind of go together. Yeah, but if Matthias, you don't have any add-ons, should work theoretically. Should work, yes. Okay. Without add-ons, should work. That's my opinion about that. Hmm. I want to see that customer without any add-ons. <laughs> Yes, I, yes, of course. Some sometimes you will need uh, at minimum one, two, three add-ons. I would say so. Thirty to forty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I you mean... will start without anyone, but uh, the time will come when you um, will have. Sorry, I mean, I if can't... if they have add-ons, they usually target the workflows, right? It's tough not to have because. The, like the the native Jira post functions, for instance, are really small. They can't really do that much. But I I always love that request. Hey, listen, I found a nice add-on in Marketplace. Can I have it in our Jira? <laughs> 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 I, that's my favorite one. And then I found an answer. I'm sending 30 uh, questions or 40, like three pages, a four of questions. And we will see if he really wants to have it or not. <laughs> and if you want that, what that, kind there is of threatening question? I, 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 I like it too, uh, playing with plugins. Yes. <laughs> it's very... like it. Okay. <laughs> then, if you will answer to that question, we will install that for on the staging environment, and you can play. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, so I'm cool. telling you, seventy-five percent of requests were dropped afterwards. <laughs> yes, but not hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Not hundred, of course. It's uh, quite low, actually. Yeah, but mm. okay, I see. Okay, so um, regarding your question, not a really pretty solution. Some stuff you can do with scripting, which basically makes it a bit more manageable. From let's say the eliminate manual work perspective, but nothing beyond that, actually. Yes. That's yes. Uh, the summary of the discussion we had. So yes, we are not surprised. Yeah. We're not surprised. We mm -hmm. expected this. Yeah. But, but we wanted to ask if, if, if you have yeah. other experiences to be sure. And now we will say our customer that's a full crowd power of a Berlin Atlassian user group um, agree. Agree, you agree with that solution. Yes doing some manually steps, uh, automated if it's possible, but you will have not a proper DevOps solution without any manual steps, never. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys think that maybe Atlassian wants to go in this direction? Because uh, I was thinking they have recently, I mean recently, uh, the official doc uh, published the official Docker images, and but I don't know if that's just because of popular demand or if that's part of some kind of trend, I would say no, I, but who knows? I, I learned in my career or experience that never trust in Atlassian. Trust in partners, <laughs> not Atlassian. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't would sign that, but um, in, in general, um, they release Docker images because it's the most convenient form of deployment for, for, for many. And uh, with the recent change of switching from Oracle JDK to Open JDK, they're allowed mm -hmm. to do so. In the past, they just couldn't um, do it the license agreement of Java. So ah, good point. There, yeah. there has always yeah. been Docker images out, but uh, uh, yeah, not officially, so to uh -huh. say. But just the Docker images, um, I mean, that, that gives you the, like, like an easy form of deployment, but um, not on a configuration level. So, I mean, uh, like we're, we're yeah. doing a lot of operations and, and uh, we do a lot of customizations of the instances prior to providing them to customers. Um, but this is very, very, uh, let's say, uh, formalized the way we do it um, and, and not as generic as you are asking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the question was, um, uh, Atlassian did a re-engineering like um, they implemented it, uh, the machine more like um, microservices, but uh, nothing would change for us in uh, that question, yes? No, I don't think so. Okay. And I and I, I you for going back to your previous question, um, does it lessen have the intention to go in that direction? I think they cannot. Yeah. Uh, because okay. they have so much legacy in that yeah. in platform right now, they would have to start from scratch. Yes, it is not done with uh, microservices. Yes, yeah. because I'm I'm a, um, a specialist and a former specialist of databases, and when I look at the database, um, it's it's a mess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what they are doing there? Well, that's a Windows NT moment, something like that. And and, and, and it's only one part I can uh, um, why I'm saying this because um, I'm experiencing this, and, and maybe there are some other parts. Um, what's the same? Yes, legacy code, Java code. Maybe okay. And they will not uh, start from scratch. Of course, it's not possible. But we have the remote summit next week. Maybe they will surprise us. Who knows? <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe uh, they are doing something with the cloud. I don't know. Probably they will tell, talk about all of that automation in the cloud, yeah? That they are giving for free finally. The something that was <clears throat> the most needed feature for most of the small um, startup teams and so on. Yeah, yeah that's... It was really like vanilla Jira is. And, and who will be watching the remote summit? Everyone? Mm -hmm. Partial. Partial? Yeah, it's still three o'clock in the morning, so you, uh, some of us will probably wait for the recordings. Yeah, that, that, yes, that, yes. that fits to my current sleep behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I'm getting older, I have less trouble with that as well. So I'm uh -huh. awake at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, anyway, so I can watch a remote sun. <laughs> so uh, if anyone is interested, we can, we can do any. The other. We can make any Zoom some, something to discuss the stuff or drink together or whatever, because how you survive up to three without drinks. Yeah. And we will have our own virtual summit um, at the 23rd of April. Don't forget that. So um, anything else you maybe want to share what you are doing in the virtual, anything you have planned, any events, any, anything we should know about that we can also communicate via our channels. That we yes. should um, so, so Christian and I had a late night call talking, talking about being up late uh, yesterday. Um, and Christian uh, had the great idea of um, basically the, um, a kind of not uh, catching a cabin fever uh, over the next couple of days since we're all locked up at home. Um, so we will initiate uh, some, some sort of uh, schedule, not on a weekly uh, basis as you did with longer talks, uh, Jörg, for the, for the community. Um, but basically the idea is to, to have lightning talks, like, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes, but daily uh, until the lockdown is over. Um, so if any one of you has an interesting topic, um, either reach out to me or uh, to Christian, um, and then we will make this uh, part of the schedule. Um, uh, and, and I guess the, the, the side with the schedule will be launching like probably next week, um, if we don't manage to get it up and running this week. Okay, can you send me the address when you have it up? Uh, yep, I will, I will shoot you the link and then, and then you can spread it um, to the community as well. 
Perfect. So it's ju just because in the afternoon it's boring and we have a lot of coffee sessions remote with the colleagues and, and, and so on, but it would be great to learn something uh, about the Atlassian ecosystem and, and may maybe some, some other topics are possible too. Um, and it should be pretty simple to have uh, one lightning talk a day. So I, I discussed that with some colleagues and we found at least five lightning talks we can do without any deeper preparation or so. Can you say just some examples of topics just to have an idea? So, so, so if you, if, uh, how many time we do have left, uh, Jörg? It's, it's planned until 11 or what is the plan? Um, this is open end. This is basically like your corner bar. I'm closing when nothing is happening anymore. So I, I, if you're interested, uh, I, have an eight, I have a customer call at 11, so I, I, I'm, I'm uh, blocked. If you are interested uh, about what, what is a lightning talk, m maybe I can show you one of our newest uh, add-ons because I'm so, so pretty proud of that add-on. Um, I, I think it's not the right uh, audience to sell it, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. And this, this is uh, an idea. <laughs> Uh, you could share um, in that uh, uh, cabin fever series then too. So, so is it possible for me to, to share my screen? Yes, it is. It should be, yes. So now, now you should see a uh, um, uh, red browser, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, who of you is knowing the uh, plug in height elements for Confluence? It's in the marketplace for three or four years now. I know the name, haven't you? Yeah, so, so uh, we have uh, three uh, to 4,000 active installations there. Um, and the idea is that a Confluence page looks not very clean. And if you have, for example, a start page for a team space or something like that, you need to hide a lot of things. Um, and, and this is the newest version. And the newest version is, I, I will show you first the standard functionality. Um, I can add this hide elements and can say, okay, I want to get rid of the buttons and so on. And I click uh, everything. I don't need the header because I have a page and uh, I don't want to see that things. And li liking a start page and commenting a start page is not uh, uh, very important. And I update this page uh, and everything that hurts is hidden. It's just the teaser image, which hints to direction. And if you think about, uh, um, team start pages in a confluence space or project start pages or so. It's pretty simple, it's CSS only. So this is not uh, 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 about performance or security. It's just hiding everything. Um, and with the next version, uh, we did um, um, an inheritance from the system administrator to the space administrator to the single user. Um, now the system administrator uh, have the has the possibility to allow or disallow hidings uh, over the complete uh, uh, instance. So let's say it doesn't matter to hide the search bar, then I lock it. And now it's not possible for the space administrator or for the single user to hide the space bar. Uh, and uh, um, maybe uh, this makes sense or this makes not sense. And I save this and this is the first situation. And the second one is the, the space uh, environment. You can lock and hide them. Maybe I have to reload it. It's a bad preparation. Now you see a search is grayed out. You cannot uh, set it again. It's not possible. Um, and you can uh, do your space admin settings. And we have some uh, or not some customers, a lot of customers, they ask us on a space level to hide likes, for example, because they do not want to have likes um, in a scenario where the CEO uh, is doing his blog, internal blog or something like that, then you can um, hide the likes on a, on a space level. 
Um, and what's uh, pretty interesting, you have that on a, a inline comment tool too. And what we have uh, experienced with large customers like BMW or Siemens or Infineon, they always have the request to hide that Jira issue link possibility space wide because this is a business space and uh, this is a business space and, and, and is not linked to any Jira uh, project. And a lot of people do not know what this button is for and click on it and then they uh, um, maybe doing some quirks. And if I save this, then I can go back uh, to my to my page. Um, and if I click here, there's only the uh, um, comment inline thing. Um, and I'm not, it's not possible. It is possible for me. Maybe I found a bug. <laughs> no, it's not possible for me uh, to hide to hide the search. And of course I can reset everything to normal. Um, maybe I want to hide only the upper scenario um, here. And in this, maybe this is a landing page. I do not need the create button anymore. Um, and now it feels more like a landing page inside of my Confluence instance. So. That's all, that's all that the plugin uh, is able to do. And uh, I love that uh, tool. I can sell it a thousand times to my customers. Why yeah. you said that it's not for us? It's brilliant. Yeah. When it will be released to the App Store? Cool. <laughs> if, if somebody like it, uh, 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 I'm, I'm happy to send you a, a voucher. Oh, Just cool. Just drop me your email in the chat. Um, um, maybe who, but I have yours already. But Christian, it's available on the App Store. It's not, not to be released. It's already there, yes? Yeah, yeah it is, it's already there. It's already there. We, we had to wait. Uh, um, uh, so the data center uh, version was uh, uh, there three weeks ago. And then we had to wait because of the downtime of the marketplace. Uh, the marketplace was down at least four days, four to five days, completely down, no revenue there. Um, and um, so we had to wait for the final solution. Then. Yes. Complete marketplace or only for Confluence? The complete marketplace was down. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think we noticed it as well, right? There was, was it recently a few weeks ago or? Two weeks ago. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we got some outages. Hmm. Annoying. Hopefully the revenue will come then only late. Um, and we will see. Yeah. So if you're interested, it's just drop me uh, a, a, a mail uh, and I will send you the voucher. It's pretty Perfect. cool and I love that tool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know your pain because I have a lot of requests like you said exactly. I don't want to have a likes or so, so on, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Perfect. So, and, 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 and just as an idea, I think this is a perfect lightning uh, talk for an afternoon session on 4 p.m. or 4.30 p.m. showing a new plugin, showing a script runner solution that you developed and want to show to the audience. And I think what it's possible using the German uh, um, partner chat and the worldwide partner chat and the social media tools is to have always 10 to 20 colleagues uh, that are willing to, to uh, learn something new uh, in a quarter in 20 minutes or something like that. And that's, that's the idea of uh, the uh, cap, kevinfever.now.s <laughs> yeah and uh, so um should we publish your email address and then daniel's or do you have a special email address for that where people can contact you and, and um submit some suggestions what they want to talk about uh, i will send the email address to you york so we're currently uh, we oh. just bought a domain yesterday evening and i'll set up a, an, an email list on that domain later today um, so the, 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 the URL will be something like no.cabin-fever.today. 
um, and we'll uh, we will get mailing up and running. And then uh, as soon as that is up and running, I'll send you the details, and then you can distribute it. Okay, perfect. We'll do that. No. So then, as your humble local corner barkeeper, um, I decide that there's nothing going on anymore, and I, um, yeah. Thank you very much for being here. I think that was very nice. Um, see you around. Have a nice time, and uh, stay healthy. Till okay, next. Stay time. healthy. Well, thank you, guys. We we thank Thanks you for everyone. your valuable input. Your perspective. Thanks a lot. Very nice of you. Bye. Well,